From the lofty mountains of western North America, many a cold, clear river flows swiftly to the sea. Fed by icy streams from snowbanks high on mountain slopes, fed by melting glaciers, and by clear forest springs. Water seeps from the deep moss and rotting wood of the ancient forest, spills over the rim of beaver dams, gathers in running brooks, slides swiftly downward in valley streams, and finally courses in the steady flow of river, driving to the sea. Each year out of the great Pacific Ocean, millions of salmon enter the cold flood of the mountain rivers. Upstream, the salmon swim, mile after mile, toward the headwaters where they will spawn. Unerringly, each adult salmon moves toward the stream in which it was born. Up rapids, up waterfalls, impassable to all but the mighty salmon, each fish is driven by an urge to return to the stream where it spent its days as a fingerling years before. Some rivers are impassable even for salmon, but these the salmon ignore, for they are not ancestral streams. Each mountain stream has its own special odor, and it is this distinctive odor that guides the returning salmon. This river is completely filled with salmon. So enormous are their numbers that the river could not possibly supply their food. But stored in the body of each fish is enough food for this last great journey. On the big rivers, some fish will travel as much as a thousand miles upstream before they reach the spawning grounds often battling for each foot of progress. Indeed, some never reach the spawning grounds. Among the rocks and shoals of the mountain streams, a hump salmon twists and turns in search of open passageways. journey's end at last. The salmon rest above the gravelly stream bed, while within their bodies, the eggs ripen. These are king salmon. Like all salmon, the female digs her nest by lying on her side and flapping. By this vigorous action, she flushes away the sand from among the pebbles, thus leaving openings and crevices between the stones to receive the eggs. Here, a pair of dog salmon prepare for spawning. As the female digs the nest, the male stays nearby.
soon the male quivers with excitement until the spray flies from his back. By strenuous flapping, the female raises the sand and tiny pebbles from the stream bed and the current carries them clear of the nest. As the fish continue to work and fight without food, they slowly waste away. Their skins turn white, their fins disintegrate. As they prepare to sow the seeds of another generation, their own lives are nearly at an end. The female in the center drops the eggs, and the males on either side fertilize them. The eggs fall gently to the nest, prepared for them among the pebbles. Then the female stirs the stream bed again, and gravel sifts down to cover the eggs and hide them from trout and other predators. She continues to make nest after nest until she has laid several thousand eggs. The purpose of the journey is achieved and the energy within the body of the parent is exhausted. Helplessly, it drifts downstream, its life over. No salmon on the Pacific coast ever survives to spawn a second time. But the dead salmon leave behind them millions of eggs buried in the gravel, the new salmon waiting to be born. Here in the stream bed, the eggs will develop slowly through the winter, First, the eyes appear as little black specks joined together by blood vessels. Now the dim outlines of a fish appear. A small red dot beneath the throat grows and beats, the tiny heart stirring into life. The growing embryo struggles inside the egg. At last, the tail breaks through the membrane, and the young fish emerges with the yolk sac still attached to its body. During the weeks of the cold weather, the bones, fins, and tissues develop, nourished by the food stored in the yolk. With the coming of spring, the water furnishes new food in the form of microscopic plants and animals. Now the young salmon grow rapidly, living in the stream at first, and later in the great ocean. Some salmon will survive the journey to the coast and the years at sea, and they will return, their great bodies stored with flesh built from the rich food in the ocean. They, in turn, will travel up the stream where they were born and found another generation. <laughs>